Good morning YouTube family. It's Ben here with VW Family Farm and today I am going through my honeybees. All right, I'm going to be going through the bee boxes today looking for swarm cells. It's that time of year. Bees are swarming all over the place. I've looked in mine one time, and I've linked that video right up here. And we didn't find no queen cells, swarm cells, or nothing. All we found was two dead hives. I hate it when that happens. That's always why I tell people that starting into bees, you always want to have, I say, a minimum of two hives that way if you lose one you can always split the other one and make make you a new hive so we are going to try today to see if we can make two splits i'm hoping get some nukes i don't have my queen castle already right now so i brought two nukes out here in preparation for this as you can see behind me the wind maybe you can see it i don't know I know you can't see the wind, but I didn't know if you could see anything blowing. Anyway, rambling. With the wind blowing today, I'm probably not going to do much talking. I may do some voiceover on the computer, and that way you don't have to sit there and listen to the roar or the the deeper tone it puts in the mic when when we get wind interference. So here we go. a couple of puffs of smoke in there give them time to calm down for a second I've already puffed some in the front entrance I just puff some up top to go ahead and get up into the honey super this keeps them a little bit calmer go ahead and puff them lightly around the outside I was using the wind to my advantage to let the wind blow the smoke over the top of the bees just calm them down a little bit one thing you don't want to do is puff right on them with hot smoke. That agitates them a little more. One thing I didn't mention is on cloudy, overcast days with uh, high humidity, bees seem to get angrier than me. All right, another thing is if you're running hive beetle traps, these disposable hive beetle traps right here, the hive beetles normally tend to get under them. So before you lift them up, there's one right there. Before you lift them up, go ahead and run your hive tool down it and smush any possibility of any hive beetles being underneath it. That way when you pick it up, they don't just fall out and run around your box. All right, as with most any hive inspections you do need to do a little cleanup. I'm not the best at cleaning up. I usually in too big of a hurry, but 
Try to run a little smoke over the top of them. Push the bees back down in the box. And I don't like to kill any of my girls. Well, when I remember when I first started doing it though, if I smushed one or two bees, uh -huh, I thought I was committing murder. But just go ahead and scrape the bird comb off the top of your frames. Keep them cleaned up. You will uh, keep from fighting it later down the road. This makes everything so much easier. I'm trying to keep everything all cleaned up here. All right, on a full box, you always want to start on the outside. This box hasn't been went into very much, so they've already got the frames properized back down. They use your hive tool, break them loose. Like I said, clean the box up. That thing is, is I can't find my favorite hive tool. I don't like these near as much. I've got another one somewhere with a hook on it. Works so much better. This box is full of some bees right here. Let's take a glance over it. Not normally, a queen's not going to be on the outside frame, but I have seen it. Usually, all that's on that outside frame is some nectar and some honey. Searching for the queen. Didn't see her on there, but I'm not guaranteed anything, so I'll set that frame right back down in there just in case she was still on that frame. And go to the next one. Every time you lift a frame, you want to try as hard as you can to lift straight up. That way, if she's on the side of that frame, you don't smush her or roll her up against the side wall of your box. I know y'all can't see much there. What I'm doing is just looking over the whole frame through all them bees. Looking for one in particular bee. All right, there we go, queen cell. Right here's a little queen cell. Two more. There right there's what a cat queen cell looks like. Alright, sorry about that. I did not realize the camera went dead while I was looking through that box. I was intently looking through that box for my queen. I ended up having to go through it three times before I finally found her. I found three frames with queen cells on them. So I have set them off to the side and we're going to make some nukes out of them. We're going to start going through another box and let's see what we find here. Now let's slow down for just a second. I want to show you what honeybee larva looks like. See the little grub worms in those cell cups there? Those are new honeybees for me. Oh, and what do we have here? I guess y'all can see the difference in what a normal worker bee and a queen bee looks like. And yes, she does have yellow paint on her. That last hive was good. Going through one of the bigger, stronger hives that I got. Let's see what we find here. Ooh, it 
looky there. There's another pretty queen. I want you to look at her coloration though. She's pretty dark. But she is one good laying queen. Look at the brood pattern on this frame here. All that cat brood, very few cells left open. She's laying from the top to the bottom. That is one queen right there I do not want to lose. these honey excluders for some people they might work that way but this super here beside it that was on top of it this thing right here is almost full so you can't go by just what everybody else says don't trust me look at all these bees these bees are up here putting honey in this box. I call it honey. I know it's nectar. Mm. Look at that. That is fresh honey. That is nectar they're drying out. That's an outside frame. All these. The way the box feels, it feels like this thing is almost full. All right, now it's time to make up a couple of nukes. Out of the very first hive we went through, we found three frames that had queen cells. One of the frames had a capped queen cell. So we know we're fixing to have new queens hatching. So what I've done is I've went to the house and got some more frames, some of them are empty. That one I just put in that box had honey stored up in it. I'm going to take two frames that have got queen cap cells and a lot of bees, set them in this first nuke. One thing you want to do is you want to make sure you got plenty of bees. When I first done it, I thought, oh, I'm going to shake these off in there and then just put this back in here. More and more I got to thinking about it with the ones I had. I thought, no, I need, I think I need to go ahead and put this frame in that box. I don't know why. You can't ever, yeah, you can't ever tell what I'm thinking. So go ahead and pull it out, set it over in there. You got enough bees in that box. Now for this box, I had two more frames that I had stored honey in. And this was the frame that had the, the cap queen cell on it that was fixing the hatch. They've also got a few more queen cells on them. I probably should have taken care of them, but just in case that one there don't hatch, still got a couple of queen cells in there. So put that in there, go ahead and put a couple of frames of food in there, and we will see in just a few weeks. these out of the other box I had the door shut it's the entrance door down here on the bottom so before you leave that alone go ahead and pop that door open 
so the bees can come and go and get acclimated to their new home I just use a hive tool pop it up fold it down now you've got a door kind of like a protector there traffic traffic traffic